So this is looking at something called uh, trig substitution. It's U substitution using trig. And so when you see a square root and x is in x squared, you might think, oh, this is going to be hopeless, right? But we're going to use a simple substitution for x using a trig function. Do you want to hear the good news first? Rebecca needs some good news. Good news is for these trig substitutions, i, b, and i will always give you what the substitution is. So you don't have to guess. All the guesswork is taken out. You know it's trig u substitution, and I'm even telling you which one we're going to substitute. Does that make you feel a little better? Well, it, uh, hopefully, because this, this is a tough, this is an interesting process. So the first thing we're going to do is take the derivative of x. Do that first, and you're going to get, what's the derivative of secant? Mia, do you know the derivative of secant? Secant tangent, did you say? Yep, that's right. Secant tangent, d theta. You didn't just say tangent, did you? I didn't. So there you go. There's the derivative. So now we have everything we need to substitute in. Now you're going to replace all the x's. All the x's with, um, let's see, 4, 1 half secant theta squared minus 1 all over 5 times 1 half secant theta. And then this is the part where people make a mistake, but you won't. You, don't you just want to put a little dx here? But what is dx equal to? And it's not a simple thing either. What is it equal to? 1 half secant theta tangent theta, me as fault, d theta. And you probably are thinking, why not, before we make our lives any more difficult, why don't we just cancel out a couple of these? So this is going to be a one-fifth square root. Four times one-half squared is one-fourth. So four times one-fourth secant squared theta minus one d theta. And cancel out. And now you need to turn to your neighbor. Tell them what is secant squared theta minus 1. Go for it. Oh, this is a true though. Put the tangent in here too. There you go. So what is secant squared minus 1 equal to? Go back in your... Matt, do you remember? Tangent squared, yep. Yeah. So this is tangent squared theta. It's a Pythagorean identity. What is the square root of tangent squared? Tangent times tangent. So this is just going to be equal to the integral of tangent squared d theta. So far so good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this will be 1 half squared is 1 fourth times 4. Yeah. I'm going to do a quick little replacement. I'm going to replace this with uh, 1, or no, secant squared theta minus 1 d theta because that's what tangent squared is. I'm going back with that Pythagorean identity. I think that's going to get me where I want to go. Did I lose anybody? Yeah? Yeah, remember that uh, tangent squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. So if we wanted to know, replace tangent squared, we could do it with secant squared. Now, why would I do that? Yeah. Uh, where did that one fifth go? Thank you. It is still there. Thank you. So this is going to be one fifth, one fifth the integral of secant squared theta, d theta, minus one fifth 
integral of 1 d theta. And we are almost home free. Whose derivative is secant squared? Tangent. So this is 1 fifth the tangent of theta minus 1 fifth of theta plus c. Now I wish I could say we were done, but we're not. Yes? Which one? A and B? Identity. Tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared, so tangent is secant squared minus 1. Pythagorean identity. Way back in the fall. I did. I did so that I could take advantage of this square root and take the square root of tangent squared. And then when I multiply these two tangents, I get tangent squared. I'm going to turn it back into secant squared minus 1 because the antiderivative of secant squared is tangent. Antiderivative of 1 is theta. Now, boy, do I wish we were done, but we're not. Got to go back and remember x is equal to 1 half secant theta. I'm going to give you just a moment. Would you solve for theta? Let's see how you did. Let's go uh, 2x equals secant theta, and secant is 1 over cosine theta. Remember that? So I like, I'd rather have it, you could have it in terms of secant, go for it, that's fine. Or you could say 1 over 2x is equal to the cosine of theta, and so what's theta? What will theta be? Inverse cosine of 1 over 2x. Is that all right? How many got that for your inverse for theta? 1, 2, 3. Marn, question on that? What I did? It's a little bit of running around with the algebra and the trig, but it's kind of interesting. So then my final answer, final answer is going to be 1 fifth the tangent of the inverse cosine of 1 over 2x minus 1 fifth of the inverse cosine of 1 over 2x plus c. And I just wish I had taught you somewhere along the way a nifty way if you had an inverse in parentheses how you could take the tangent of that. I just wish I taught you something. Or a song, even. What's the song? Make a triangle, right? It's written on the wall, even. Make a triangle. Make a triangle. I can't remember. Never could remember the end of that song. So here's my triangle. Here's theta. Here is 1 over 2x. This is going to be the square root of 4x squared minus 1. So when we put all this thing together, it's going to be one-fifth. Tangent is the opposite, 4x squared minus 1 over 1 minus one-fifth inverse cosine. Now there's no tangent of this, so we just have to leave it as is, plus c. And welcome to the deep side of the pool. That's your answer. Something real simple looking turns out pretty nasty. But that is using the U substitution and trig. Just don't forget when you get your answer here, you're tempted to think you're done, but you got to get your theta plugged in. Use this right here. Got to get your theta plugged in for each of these. And so that's what I did here and here. And that gives you that final answer. And that is U sub trig style.